As we've been seeing within recent years, anime and manga have been shooting up in popularity, which is very good for anime and manga, but when popularity comes around for something at the same time, well, you have Western companies and journalists who want to change it to fit their standards. Here we go again. Hey, what is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. We have a lot to talk about today, anime and manga being the first thing. You know, recently we've been seeing anime and manga just continuing to boost in popularity. It's been something that people have been jumping to, people enjoy, fantastic media, fantastic entertainment, people love it. You know, and more and more people have been coming to it. And, you know, the thing is, is that I'd say we are within the second golden age of anime. The first one being probably around the time of mid to late 90s, early 2000s, I would say. Um, you know, that was a great time for anime itself. And now here we are yet again. I'd say this started to really boom up around 2015 to 2016 and then just continue to soar. And here we are now. Yet again, we are now seeing within the second consecutive month in a row that... Well, out of the top 20 adult graphic novels for May is yet again manga, as you can see here. And, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, you can read all of this right here, but, uh, you know, looking at it, May yet again was dominated by manga for the top 20 adult graphic novels. It's pretty funny when you think about it because, you know, if comics were doing as good as some of the, you know, outlets that tried to protect them, you know, like promote these comics and whatnot... It's funny that they say, oh yeah, comics are doing great, when most of it's manga. <laughs> because manga is actually doing great because it's giving you good stories, great entertainment, excellent characters, you know, good action, which people enjoy. You know, people used to go to DC and Marvel comics all the time because they used to do good stuff like this also. But nowadays, it's about their politics, what checkboxes they have to hit, rather than trying to tell you a good story. You know, and nobody cares about that. That's where manga is actually telling you a good story and giving you good entertainment. But wait, there's more! Not only is manga doing well, because anime also is on the rise, which it has been for the past few years as well as manga. With this from comicbook.com, anime demand has risen over 30% domestically this year, which it's not surprising, because, you know, when you have all this terrible political garbage in Western entertainment that people don't care to watch, right, well, they're going to go where they can find good entertainment. Also, one big contributor, I would say, to this is because, well, you know, the pandemic last year, people were sitting around binge-watching shows, which anime would be one of them that they could get into. So they probably sat around, watched anime, and, you know, that also would spark up interest in it, and people would go and buy more things like, you know, collectibles like the merch and whatnot, and, you know, help it soar more, you know, right? And people going around saying, hey, look, I watched this really cool show, <laughs> recommending it to people, be like, you know, it was anime. And they'd be like, oh, yeah. You know, and uh, when you look at Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer, you know, with uh, Mugen Train, for example, and how well that was, you know, it's going to show that, you know, it's really on the rise, and I don't think that the brakes will be hitting anytime soon. I think that it's going to continue to go up. As you can see here, this chart from Parrot Analytics really shows that it's been growing within the past few years and, you know, even within the 2020 quarter year, it, you know, it was going up from then to 2021 to uh, the first quarter. So that is really good to see that. Now, of course, what this also means, though, is that you'll see more Western companies want to get some of that cash. So they're going to try to start getting more involved with streaming anime on their services. And that could become a very serious issue because that means that Western companies might try to get their hands in the mix and try to make anime fit their standards, which would not be good. Now, of course, Tubi has their own deal with uh, Toei Animation, you know, and it doesn't seem like that they're really doing anything when it comes to the anime they're putting on their streaming service, which is a good thing. Uh, because, you know, anime should be the way that it is. Nothing should be altered or changed. Anime should be the way it's meant to be, right? And so that's a good thing, at least. But, you know, needless to say, when you look at Crunchyroll or when you look at Funimation, well, they try to change their dubs or, you know, alter things to fit their standards, which is a problem. Because nobody wants that, you know? Nobody wants that garbage uh, in anime. Besides, you know, nobody wants it in entertainment in general. Uh, but... You know, that's Funimation and that's Crunchyroll. And even Netflix is Netflix. goes around and screws things over as well. 
Um, but we've even seen it with manga where Seven Seas Entertainment even did this too. So you can see where they're trying to change things, which is not good. Um, because people like anime and manga the way it's been. Now, of course, you could also say that outlets like these, like from Anime Feminist, why are problematic translations fixed? You don't like where they're trying to attack anime. You can see where this is a big problem. Because this means that they're going to try to get things changed to fit their agendas. You know, they gotta set that bar for Hollywood. <laughs> you know, and we all know how bad Hollywood's been with anime. Like live action adaptations. Like Dragon Ball Evolution. Death Note. It, ugh, God. Jesus, let's not... <laughs> Have <laughs> stuff like that. Oh God, it's it's so bad. It, oh, those live action adaptations are terrible. But also, we've seen other outlets where they try to say that why Attack on Titan is the alt right's favorite manga. You know, trying to say that it's white supremacist. You know, like it, it's ridiculous, which is not true. But you know, they try to say that. Or how Attack on Titan was a uh, you know fascist. Like this is absolutely absurd. But, you know, they're going to try to find ways to attack anime however they can. It's like um, sci-fi fangirls also trying to say that anime was fascist. And guess what? Their site is now officially dead. <laughs> the big issue that they have is that they can't control anime. So what are they going to do? They're going to try to do what they can to try to alter it, get it changed however they can. So they're going to have these articles out here trying to bash anime and be like, Oh, well, it's so bad, it supports terrible things! <laughs> Which is really dumb. You know, and this is why sci-fi fangirls is dead. Because they try to do things like this. You also have this one here. What can we learn about men through problematic anime? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know, this is dumb. But this is their way to try to attack anime to get it altered, to get it changed or censored, because they cannot change it, because Japan won't let them get in the door. You know, Japan, they look at this stuff and they think this is stupid, right? You know, they just look at it and they're like, well, no, we go where the money takes us. We don't listen to these whiny morons that make these articles that aren't even true. <laughs> like, they don't listen to that crap. But of course, they're going to try to do whatever they can to attack Japan for their culture and try to change it. Because that's what they like to do. I mean, look at this one from the Mary Sue. Maui misogyny and masculinity animates cute this problem and how to fix it! Like, which, the Mary Sue, they're a bunch of idiots themselves. Which, they came into a fight against anime fans, which was dumb for them. But, you know, this is what they do. They go after anime which look anime itself is made for the japanese audience first that's the whole point you know this is what people like is their culture this is the reason why people like anime is because people love japan's culture they love what they do with their form of entertainment which they have every right to do but of course you know it's funny whenever you have these sites that go well, we should respect one's culture. Because, you know, this is what the Puritans do, right? You know, this is their typical argument is respect one's culture. But then what do they do? Well, they prove that they contradict themselves because then they try to attack what they can't control. And they can't control Japan. They can't get them to bend the knee. So because of that, well, they got to do whatever they can to attack them until they do bend the knee. You know, that's the big problem here. And you look at companies like Funimation, for example, right? Because Funimation is a big one to look at. You know, the thing that's fearsome, like I was saying, about how a lot of these Western companies are going to want to get involved. You know, it's like how they are talking about how they're on an anime production committee and how now they can try to get influence in on anime. And see, this is the big paragraph I always go back to. Reason why is because you look at what they said here in this, where they state um, this part right here. Conversely, Funimation is trusted by the rest of the committee to use their international expertise to better market the show for foreign viewers and provide more detailed input to the other Japanese companies regarding what fans abroad would like to see. It's a win-win. When in reality, it's not a win-win because fans all over just want to see anime for what it's always been. They don't want changes. But this is their way of saying, we're going to alter it to please people on Twitter. We're going to alter it to please people in Portland. You know, that's that's basically what they're really saying. And that's a problem. 
because nobody wants to see these changes that they want to push in there. You know, like how they've been changing their dubs or <laughs> the best one. Interspecies reviewers were like, this is the anime. Just let's go ahead and get it. And then the next thing you know, they read it and they're like, oh, God, they do things in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I mean, when they were like, we gotta ban it, and they were trying to hold it as long as they could so nobody could watch it, was was absurd, you know, and then you also have Crunchyroll, because this article is a big one as well, I talked about it before, Crunchyroll's Joanne Wage says anime is still growing in Intel markets, which it is, while anime is still growing, the one thing that's always a paragraph to look at here was this statement. The co-production partners have to be receptive to input, she said. There are simple things that added or removed can maximize the audience in a given territory. She added that Crunchyroll is uniquely positioned to help Japanese partners through cultural minefields abroad. We have 150 marketing people across the globe with an intimate knowledge of their local markets. Hollywood studios can't do what we do. See, here's the problem. This also means censorship. To add or remove certain things, that means that they're going to add whatever is within their standards and remove what they find offensive. Like, for example, spicy female characters are going to look at it and they're going, Oh, sexy woman, man! <laughs> Put a sense bar over it! Put it over it! You know, which is not good. This is what I mean by this is a problem that a lot of the Western market, like, could actually do if they get their influence, if they get a say, they might try to change things. Now, of course, the Love Hina author, uh, I got to give him credit. He's done great by trying to, you know, actually do something about this, talking about this problem that the Western industry may try to do. I uh, got to give him credit. And he doubles down on this, which is very good because, you know, he's trying to make sure that entertainment stays as entertainment, that anime does not get affected. And that's a great thing. I got to give the man credit. He does an excellent job. And, you know, this is the problem that he does warn, though, is that, you know, they're trying to force political correctness into manga as well as into anime even. And, you know, this is what we've been seeing. You know, we've been seeing this within Western entertainment. You know, like, as I've said before, look at what happened to Star Wars. Look at what's happened to DC and Marvel. You know, look at uh, look at what's happened to a lot of movies and shows. You know, nowadays, well, they're becoming political. You know, that's what they're doing. They're just ruining a lot of the Western entertainment that people once enjoyed, people loved, people had a passion for, and that's a serious problem. And, you know, he's very aware of this problem that's been going on, as well as how, like, you have companies, like I said, like Funimation, Crunchyroll, who are going to try to push their political correctness into anime and manga, which is a serious issue. And that's why he's trying to fight back in his own way to prevent this from happening, because we've seen it, like I said, in tons of forms of entertainment, including video games. We've been seeing it in some video games as well, which, uh, you know, nobody wants that, right? Uh, so, you know, that's why he's trying to fight to make sure that anime and manga can't be altered or changed. And this is the big issue that happens with popularity. When something becomes very popular, you're going to see more and more dive in to try to have it, which then means that they could try to seize control and insert what they want in it and take out what made it special and good in the first place to try to ruin it, as we've seen in the past with other forms of entertainment. So, with anime and manga rising, well, the problem could be that this could start to happen, which is a serious issue. And this is why I think Japanese companies, what they should actually do, is they should try to get these series out themselves, not worry about localizers, because, you know, when you think about it, they could do it themselves now. You know, it's not like the market was back in the 90s where they needed to use it through other outlets. Because when you think about it, the internet is so vast now, you know, and there's so much more they can do as opposed to back then having to use Western localizers, which I think would be better than having to use like Funimation as an outlet or Crunchyroll if they're going to try to alter things, you know, which they have been doing. So, you know, I think that's how Japan could fight this is by getting it out there themselves and distributing it their own way. But, you know, that's just my thoughts on this. But anyways, let me know what you think about this entire situation down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And make sure you are still subscribed because YouTube is unsubscribing people from all their favorite channels. So make sure you are still subscribed to all your favorite channels. Hit the video with a like and also be sure to share the video on social media. Spread the word and get it out there. It's greatly appreciated and it really helps out the channel a lot. Also, be sure to follow me on Discord and Minds. We have a wonderful community there, not only that, but it will keep you up to date on when the newest videos will be released. As well as any other upcoming events in the near future. So be sure to follow me on both Discord and Minds. The links are in the description down below.
But anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow could always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.